Hey everyone, welcome to Quick Break Games, and today we're going to be ranking LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Sagas Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. We're going to be ranking the 5 levels within that movie, from worst to best, so 5 being worst, 1 being best. And so let's not have any filler, and let's get right into the video. Alright, at number 5 we have Indoor The Line. This is the third level of episode 6 and this level is essentially a remake of the speeder showdown level from the original games and I think I might actually prefer the original uh, so this level starts off with a brief section where you have to take down several stormtroopers and uh, this part is kinda cool because there are some mini kits and level challenges to do here but it's very short and you quickly get access to the speeders. So this brings us to the main reason why I had to put this level at the bottom of the list. The rest of the level is a repetitive speeder section that has zero variety. Your objective is to take down the other stormtroopers riding on speeders and that's about it. Now this was pretty much the only objective in the original level too, but in that case there was not nearly as many stormtroopers to take out and it was also broken up with regular on foot gameplay. Here it's just one repetitive gameplay loop. Also, something I found strange is how the Stormtrooper counter works. It'll always say you have to take out 4 or 5 enemies, and once you do that, it says you need to take out another 4 or 5 enemies. It's pretty much resetting. And this repeats probably 5 or 6 times until you finally take out enough Stormtroopers. Why couldn't they just make it say, take out like 25 enemies or something like that? It makes me wonder if originally they were going to have like a variety of objectives here instead of just Stormtroopers, but they had to scrap it at some point in development and they just kept it all the same. I don't know, it's just a theory. So overall, this section is the same thing over and over again and goes on for far too long. I really think it would have gone a long way if they just added a few different objectives here while you're on the speeder, or broke up the monotony with some on-foot gameplay, just like the original. Uh, so for all these reasons, I'm going to put Indoor the Line at number 5. Okay, so at number 4 we have the Copa Katana. This is the Boba Fett boss fight over the Sarlacc Pit near the beginning of the movie. This is a new version of the Great Pit of Carcoon level from the original games. So you start off on top of the sail barge fighting Boba Fett right away. Yeah, he's pretty easy to take down though. You hit him a few times as he flies above you. Then the fight transitions to where he is flying kind of over the sand to the right of the ship. And you have to hit him with the ship's guns. Uh, nothing too crazy here, but I think it's a satisfactory fight. So after you take down Boba Fett, you then fight some standard enemies as you make your way inside the sail barge and into a second boss fight against Jabba the Hutt. Is this the only level in the game with two boss fights? That's pretty cool if that's the case. Anyways, what makes this fight unique is that you play as Leia in R2-D2, where Leia is still chained to Jabba, so it sort of limits her movement. So because of her limited movement, this forces you to, at times, engage in combat as R2-D2, which I think is pretty neat and something that definitely wasn't possible in the original games where R2-D2 couldn't really do that much. Oh, and you do get to fight Salacious Crumb during this boss fight too, so that's kind of cool. So overall, the Copa Katana is a fun level. It's packed with two boss fights, but it's fairly short and doesn't do anything super remarkable, which is why I'm placing it at number 4. Alright, at number 3 we have the Chewbacca Defense. This is the new version of the Battle of Endor level, and I think this version is a lot better. So this time you just play as Chewbacca and Wicket as you battle your way through the forest of Endor. So this level does have a cool mechanic near the beginning where you're using cover while you shoot up some stormtroopers, which is something you do quite a bit throughout the game, except this time you can push your cover towards the enemies, which I thought was a pretty neat idea. It's kind of like you're pushing and making progress as you fight against these waves of stormtroopers. The game then gives you an option between two different paths that you decide through a multi-build. This adds some awesome replayability as you're locked out of whatever path you didn't take. Uh, it definitely makes you want to play through the level again at least one more time to see kind of what's behind that other path that you didn't choose. And each of these different ways are vastly different too. The left path has you going to a sort of Ewok village area, while the right path has you going across a bridge with an ATST boss fight on the other side. And I will say the right path is also the way to go if you're hunting for mini kits and challenges. But ultimately both paths meet up and leads to an ending section where you pilot an ATST. It's always good to have some vehicle gameplay to switch things up. But this section doesn't last too long and just a little bit later you're going to reach the bunker and the level ends. Now in terms of improvements, I think it would have been cool if they lengthened the level just a bit with a Han Solo section where you enter the bunker like in the original games, but I guess they decided against something like that. So overall, the Chewbacca Defense is a very solid level, it's very replayable, which is why I'm putting it at number 3. So 
So at number two, we have Fulfill Your Destiny. Yes, the classic Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader and Palpatine fight had to be pretty high up on this list. The original level was called Jedi Destiny, so it's interesting that they kept the names pretty similar. So you start off the level with a lightsaber boss fight against Darth Vader. It's a pretty standard fight at first, nothing too different from the past lightsaber duels. Uh, but then it transitions to a neat little stealth section, which is very reminiscent of the scene in the movie, so I definitely enjoyed that. Unfortunately though, if you play this level a few times, you'll probably find out that this section can be easily cheesed by just walking past Vader and exiting out of the shadows. You don't really have to engage in stealth at all. So after that, you then fight Vader again and have a quick time event, then you start fighting Palpatine. One thing I appreciate about this level is how Player 2 still plays as Darth Vader. It makes this a really fun co-op level rather than having Player 2 play as like R2-D2 or something, sort of like they did with the Mustafar fight in this game. Now Palpatine is essentially fought through quick time events. You fight some Imperial Guards, you do a quick time event, rinse and repeat. So this boss fight really feels more like a fight against the Imperial Guards rather than a fight directly against Palpatine, so it would have been nice if they let you kind of engage with Palpatine a little bit more, but I'm fine with it. It's a very cinematic fight for sure. So yeah, Fulfill Your Destiny is a really good boss fight level based during a pivotal scene in the movie. Now I did want to briefly mention that when you're playing in free play, there are a couple back areas in this level that offer some mini kits to find outside of the standard boss arena, so that's a plus as well. So overall, I'm putting Fulfill Your Destiny at number two. So in the number one spot, I'm putting a plan to save Han. This is the opening level of episode six, and it seems like oftentimes I find the opening levels to be the best ones, and that is definitely the case here. This takes place when Leia, Chewbacca, and later Luke are infiltrating Jabba's palace to rescue Han. Now, I'm a big fan of stealth sections in games, but let's be honest, Skywalker Saga doesn't have super in-depth stealth mechanics or anything like that, but I do love the stealth here. You could even choose to do pretty much the entire level in stealth if you want to, and there's even a level challenge for doing it. I love it when developers can make stealth a viable option. So this level starts off as Leia and Chewbacca sneak around the palace corridors to eventually get to Han frozen in carbonite. There's a few puzzles along the way, like crossing over gaps or opening up locked doors, so that's pretty nice. Once you reach Han, the level sort of resets, and this time you get to play as Luke in his hooded Jedi outfit, something that we could never do in the original. And one thing I do want to mention about this level are the optional free play paths that hold mini kits. At the start of the level, there's an entire optional hallway that you can go down that even has a salacious crumb boss fight. And later on, there's a protocol droid door you can open to gain access to another room. So again, sort of similar to Chewbacca Defense, there's a good sense of replayability here. Then at the end of the level, to top it all off, we have the Rancor boss fight, which I enjoyed a lot more in this game compared to the originals. You get to force throw objects at it or even beat it with a bone. And I definitely appreciate the effort they went through to make this fight a little bit more movie accurate than the originals. They took the time to take away Luke's lightsaber and swap it with a bone. They didn't really have to do that, so that's definitely a nice touch. But that pretty much wraps up this level. You have two great stealth sequences, optional paths, and a great ending boss fight. This is a great LEGO adaptation of this part of the movie, which is why I'm going to have to put a plan to save Han in the number one spot for Return of the Jedi. So guys, that is going to be my ranking for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga's Return of the Jedi. Let me know in the comments below what your ranking would be, and if you agree, be sure to give your reasoning as well. It's always fun to read those. And remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, subscribe for more content like this here on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time here on Quick Break Games.